Hey guys, so in this session with Nikita, I was really looking to build on her come when I call you and adding layers. So the first step with this exercise is I start to build a hand target. So that's me dropping the hand. And when she touches it, I say yes and reward. And sometimes how I start to do this while she's distracted is I'll throw a cookie across the room. When she goes to get it, she'll pick it up and then I'll call her almost immediately to me. She'll look over, I'll drop my hand, and then she'll target it. So this is a moment that happens often that like, wait a second, I don't really know, there's a stall out. So I just helped her out, I moved a little bit. The picture to her just looked a little strange because we were close up. So um, <laughs> I start to throw random things like pens and pieces of paper and just anything that would kind of get her a little more disengaged and then I could call her at random because in reality when you call your dog you're not usually they're not usually staring at you so if you're out in the world and she's running around in a park or wherever you take her she's probably looking at something else when you need to call her to you so the idea is starting to look for opportunities where your dog's a little distracted call them to you or give a signal so my recall word is here and that's essentially my watch me cue or look at me cue, which is termed in dog training. That's a pretty fundamental one. When they look over, that's when I'll drop my hand or prompt my hand. Um, you can then build on this and play hide and seek and, and hide and say here. And then the dog has to come find you and then target your hand. So it builds this um, like drive. It becomes more like a game. So um, I had just uh, my helper or my helper just hold her while I went and got my dog, who you remember from the last video. So now I'm going to start to do some work with uh, the impulse control with the come when I call you. So um, this is, again, looking at layering. So I make it real easy for her at first. I just put my dog in the crate, close the crate, and then um, call her from the same spot she had been she had been doing it from. And then I start to make it a little harder. I call my dog. And then I call Miss Nikita and then I'll get my dog kind of moving around and then um, she becomes a little overwhelmed. She's like, wait a second, this is hard. And that's okay. Even though she knows my dog from last time, it's still just an added stressor and something we want to work through. So this is kind of like looking at a discipline moment of come when I call you. and <laughs> It's real cute. Um, so I slowed it down. So I call them both to me and she kind of cuts my dog off. So my dog was like, what? And then uh, my dog gets there and then she kind of goes to play. She does like the pawing and um, which is fine, but she's quite large and, and my dog is small. So the pawing at her can be quite a lot. So I just was like, all right, we're not going to do that. Um, she started a little wound up. So I sat with her and just... Um, chilled out a little bit just so that we can kind of have a break in the training. When you do a lot of training like this and you're starting to like do a lot of mind work. So I want you to think of these sessions as like math class for your dog. And she just went up to play again. So I put her back. So when we start with our like fundamentals in the beginning, that's like your plus and minus. You just kind of warm the brain up. Here's what we're doing. You build focus. Then when we bring in my dog, um, that's like your multiplication. You start to make it a little more advanced. You start to put a little bit more um, pressure on the situation, make things more complicated. And then this scenario, so this area, so this area is like your algebra long division. There's lots of noises going on. It, there's dogs in these windows and doorways that can't be in the general area. So it's really stressful. All she can hear is the sounds. And like you can notice her body language kind of change overall. So this is where the training really helps. But you also have to be aware of when to help your dog through and kind of decompress and and help them through that stress. So she starts to get up and get squirrely. And so that she doesn't get too ahead of herself, I want her to sit as soon as possible and get her in a behavior that she knows. So once she's sitting, I kind of hang with her and just kind of like 
we're good. We're here. This is all you need to do. We just were doing this. You know it. You can do it. And then when I take her out of pan, that's me taking her to an area that's less like dense with the dog sounds and just letting her decompress there. So I'm going to make a whole video on like decompression and what to look for and like what to look for when your dog is stressed, frustrated, um, and what to do. Like when do you push them and when do you like really just like sit with them and like, Hey, I got you. So I knew she could do it. She's perfectly capable. So I just was like, all right, we're going to just keep moving through it. So she sat, she waited, and then she came over, um, did some sniffing along the way. So then in this one, I was looking for some promptness. Um, I asked for the sit with no pressure on the leash, which she did great. And then when I called her, she came right to me. So overall, she did awesome. And uh, that was where I just was like, all right, let's go back in the room. We played ball a little bit. Um, she just kind of mostly wanted to hang out. So I gave her a few minutes of just hanging out and chilling. But, um, when you guys practice this at home, you'll, you'll just start to look at building the hand target. So you'll drop your hand. If she touches it, mark it with the word yes, or you can say nice or good and then reward pretty much immediately. And then start to build space and use whatever cue is going to come naturally to you guys. So Nikita here, Nikita come, um, and if she starts to build the association with the hand target, it's going to make it really, really easy. So you'll say Nikita here, she'll look over, um, you'll drop your hand and she's like, boom, I know what to do with that. I got to go touch it. And then you can start to do the hide and seek um, and start layering it that way. It's real nice at home. So next time I want to put her on a long line and start to work her through that. But again, um, keep an eye out for that video on the decompression and just helping your dog through some of those stressful moments in training uh, because we don't want to give up. They won't learn at that point, but we also do have to be empathetic and know what to look for in those moments. So overall, awesome dog. I just love to work with her. And now she has decided that we are best friends. Every time I go into the play area, she's just like, hey, it's time for me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, not till Tuesday. <laughs> or I think it's Wednesday this week. Uh, but either way, I hope you guys are having a great day wherever you're watching this from. And you know how to find me if you have any questions. And I will talk to you soon.